bringing you another fast-moving, fact-filled 15 minutes of sports right here at the frat house. Uh, before we jump into everything, we, we got this news just before we went on the air. Breaking news, literally. I'm not joking, folks. 410 this afternoon, apparently, it was announced that 11-time uh, uh, All-Star and Hall of Famer Gary Carter, uh, catcher for the uh, New York Mets and, of course, the uh, Montreal Expos, uh, passed away as a result of uh, uh, cancer, uh, brain tumors, uh, sad situation, age of 57. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that that was included in here. Uh, we'll probably talk a little bit more about it again uh, next week. As I said, it was uh, brought to us just as we were going on the air. So uh, condolences out there. Uh, Gary Carter, I just thought the world of. We'll talk more about it next week. Um, let's move into our regular show here. Uh, next Sunday, Sidekick. Next Sunday, now, February 26th, opening race day for NASCAR season. Yep. We've got the Tuna 500, always a big event right here at the Frat House, always yep. a big event. Uh, but for all of our friends and our, our fans out there, uh, fans from Facebook, whatever, we have a unique interactive opportunity for you. You can jump in on our NASCAR Fantasy League. We still have a few spots open, all right, they're still available. And if you're interested, all you got to do is hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on Facebook, and we'll give you all yep. the information on how to jump in on that. It, it's a lot of fun. And somebody's got to help me out knocking off that defending. Returning champion. Yeah, yeah, he might think he is. Uh, next thing, I want to send out a congrats and a shout-out uh, to, to my buddy John Force. John yep. Force, 15-time uh, NHRA funny car champion. Uh, last Sunday, they opened up their season, and HRA did, uh, in Pomona with the Winter Nationals. And 62 years old, he won the race. He Still knocked it off in the funny car. All right? Guy's positively amazing. You're, you're, you're not a big uh, drag racing fan, though, are you? Oh, I, I watched RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, you mean, uh, oh, you mean NHRA? No. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I might be this season. Yeah, I have a funny feeling you could be because here, we've got not one, hey, but how about two rookie female uh, funny car division drivers, all right? Uh, one is 23-year-old Courtney Forrest. Yes, that's the daughter of John. And the other is Alexis DeJura. She's 35 years old. She's the daughter of owner of, uh, she's the daughter of the owner of both uh, Patron Tequila and yes. Paul Mitchell Hair Care Products. So uh, might give you a reason to be stopping out here to the front house and checking out a little NHRA with us. Uh, oh yeah, that so oh, cool. might be might be some fun. Uh, countdown to baseball. Let's take a look at baseball real quick. Hey, uh, you know we're probably going to spend a little more time on this. I would think next week because all yeah. the spring training camps will be opening up. Um, but I thought we'd do it, you know, as we did last week, we'll do our little countdown here. I mean, yes, it might be February, but, hey, we're just a mere two days away from spring training opening, 13 days away from spring exhibition, 48 days until opening day. Opening day. Would you drop by my office? I would be more than happy to. Yep. Uh, boy, we're really going to round things out right now. Yep. Got to tell you, I've never been much of a pro basketball fan, you know. Uh, college basketball, yes. Pro basketball, not quite as much. I gotta be honest, I've really gotten into it this year. I, 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 I don't know if it's because of the shortened season. Uh, they're playing, I think, it's 66 games. It's been moving along, it's fast. You know, you're getting games all the time. Um, you know, I remember back during the uh, lockout, I was putting up posts and letting people know what was going on with the lockout. And, you know, I was getting comments like, who cares? You know, who cares about the NBA? I don't know. I got into it this year. I don't know about you. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sitting there. I'm watching it. I'm, you know, and I think a lot of it, like I said, has a, has a lot to do with the fact that it is a shortened season. It's all condensed into about four months, frankly. I think it's maybe about what, what they ought to do all the time. Yeah, it, Take a 65-game season and crunch it into four months, and maybe that would help. Anyhow, we thought we'd give you a quick glimpse of where things stand right now in the NBA, just for the fun of it. Uh, right now, you got those uh, Chicago Bulls out there in the Central Division. Yeah. They're at the top. Uh, Miami Heat right behind it. All right, in the Southeast Division, 23 and 7 record for that Miami Heat. Uh, Oklahoma City Thunder in the Northwest, 22 and 7 record. San Antonio Spurs uh, are always going to be there, 21 and 9. Hey, Philadelphia 76ers, 20 and 10 leading the Atlantic Division, the LA Clippers, uh, coming in at the bottom there with the 18 and 9 uh, record. We've got the All Star Game, I believe, coming up next weekend as well. Conflicting a little bit with that uh, Daytona race, right. uh, but uh, 
they're going to have their all-star game nonetheless, whether you whether you think it's a good idea or not. I frankly thought they should have just canned that one, leave it alone, in light of the fact that there is a shortened season. But uh, so there's our NBA. Now we can't leave the NBA this week without talking a little bit about Jeremy Lin. A little insanity. And I refuse to use those puns. I was just going to start by saying, I refuse to say linsation, linsanity. I hate the triteness. I hate the triteness of it all. Uh, but, I mean, let's get it straight. I mean, the, the NBA has got their own version of Tim Tebow all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh, I, well, see, I, I'm more liking him to Victor Cruz, I thought. Really? Guy come off the bench, somebody goes down hurt. Guy comes yeah. off the bench, all of a sudden he's, you know, he, he's, he's, you know, a big baller, yeah. as they say. It, it was interesting. I, I, I read, I, I, I got the Sports Illustrated this, this week. Uh, uh, oh, not this issue. No, not this issue. It was this issue. <laughs> this issue. Uh, all right. And uh, fascinating article on, on Jeremy Lin. 23-year-old um, point guard, right? Uh, incredible story. He played for Harvard last year. I've got the yep. Harvard picture up there. I did that one on purpose. Was not drafted by the NBA at all. He was signed by the by the Knicks uh, just before New Year's Day. So he's only been on the Knicks bench now for, what are we talking, six weeks maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was after being scratched by two other teams. Both the Warriors and the Rockets nailed, it scratched him right off their team, okay, just before Christmas. Within a period of 15 days. He was on one team and then on another. And within 15 days, they both... And I thought the Knicks were even looking to trade him. Uh, they were, in fact. There was talk that they were, you know, that they weren't going to use him at all. Um, and in six games so far, the, the guy has played in the NBA. He has totaled 100. Well, actually, in the first four games, are you ready for this one? In the first four games, he totaled 109 points. That's the most by any player ever in their first four games, beating Allen Iverson, who did it in 101. Um, this is the same guy that last Thursday. Uh, faced down Kobe Bryant, okay, against the Lakers. Faced him down, okay, grinning, grinning like you wouldn't believe, pushing him out of the way, and promptly dropped 38 points on him, okay, against Kobe's 34. Uh, everybody's saying, is this guy for real? Uh, he's the same guy that up until last weekend, Madison Square Garden Stadium Security wanted to know uh, what team he was the trainer for. No joke. This is all true. How about before last Thursday's game, concessions uh, employees at Madison Square Garden had to iron the number 17 on the back of jerseys just so that they had something on the shelves. Absolutely incredible story. I've been asking, I've been asking, I've been asking. I don't think anybody's got the answer. We're just going to have to wait and see. Is it going to just, is this going to be Tebow from the standpoint that it's just going to drift away and disappear? I don't know. It's, I mean, he did it the other night with a, with a three-point shot to win it with uh, literally, literally a second left on the clock. Absolutely incredible story. It's been fun to watch. Fun to watch. The NBA, worth taking a look at, whether you're a fan or not a fan, like I have been. NHL leaderboard. All right. Yep, here we go. Uh, let's take a look at the NHL leaderboard for this week. We've got uh, Detroit Red Wings up there. They, they, they won that... I, and I think they're going for the. They they they, 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 did they it. tied it, and did they break it? They, they broke, broke it last night. Yes. yes? All right. It. They broke it last night. And consecutive home wins, twenty one. Uh, of course, tied it against the Flyers uh, the other the other day. Uh, New York Rangers in second place in the Atlantic Division with seventy nine. Vancouver in third. Boston Bruins fourth. San Jose Sharks in fifth, and the Florida Panthers in sixth place. And as we promised, we're going to take a look at the Northwest Division. We're going to break that one down. Yep. Uh, home to the uh, Edmonton Oilers, the Minnesota Wild, Colorado Avalanche, Calgary Flames, Vancouver Canucks. We'll start it off with the Edmonton Oilers. And i got to tell you, uh, Psychic, this, this sure ain't the team we're seeing right now. This sure ain't the Wayne Gretzky Oilers that we remember. Oh, no. We're starting in the basement. Yep. Edmonton Oilers, they're 22, 28, and 6. Currently sitting on 50 points. They've got a negative 19 goal differential. They're 5-3-2 over their last 10 games. Their leading scorer is Jordan Eberle, mm -hmm. who has uh, 25 goals, 30 assists, and 55 points. Followed up by Taylor Hall, 20 goals, 22 assists, 42 points. And their netminder... 
Nikolai. I'm gonna mess it up. Holly Bullen. No, you did. Uh, he's 12, 16, and five with a 2.56 GAA. Uh, Holly Bullen, however, has been splitting that duty with uh, Dubnik. Uh, back and forth they've been going right. um, I think some of that has to do with Holly Bullen's uh, age although he's yeah. uh, both, 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 both the goalies have been respectable and, and uh, in news today the Oilers traded uh, they acquired defenseman Brian Rodney yeah. from the Ducks for yeah. center Ryan O'Mara and we were talking pre-show a little bit about the fact that defensemen are in such a demand right now yes um and we'll talk a little bit more about that, I'm sure, next week, because uh, apparently there were some big trades that uh, are occurring as we speak right now. Uh, let's go take a look at those uh, Minnesota Wild. Uh, they're number four in the uh, uh, division. And, and you know, I, I just can't get used to saying Minnesota without saying North Stars. I, I, I'm old school. Uh, but no, no, it's the Wild, and they're not. Uh, they're in fourth place with a 25, 23, and 8 record, 58 points. Uh, team is, is led in scoring by uh, Danny uh, Heatley with 19 goals, 21 assists, 40 points, um, and 35-point scorer uh, 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 Koivu uh, with 9 goals and 26 assists. Uh, mining the net has been split. This is another situation where they're splitting the duty, just like we saw with the Oilers. Splitting the duty between Backstrom and uh, Josh Harding. Um, Personal observation, don't look for this wild team to be seeing any postseason action uh, this season. That's just my personal <laughs> opinion on it. Uh, we got the Colorado Avalanche in third place yes. in the division. Psychic. Ironically, a Stan Kroenke-owned team, just like my much-beloved Rams. Ah, how about that? How did that Did not know out? that. Did not know that. So, the, the Avalanche are 28, 26, and 4, sitting on 60 points. They've got a negative 15 goal differential. They're three, five, and two over the last ten games. Their leading scorer is Ryan O'Reilly. He's got yep. 15 goals, yep. 26 assists, and 41 points. Uh, followed by Paul Statsny mm -hmm. with 14 goals, 22 assists, and 36 points. Their main uh, netminder is Mr. Semyon Varlamov. Mm -hmm. 14, 17, and two with a two point. Or no, I'm 3.0. He's got two shutouts. Yep, he's got a 3.0 GAA. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, Colorado has been one of those teams. They're funny. They 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 kind of sneak up on you, and they can get into the playoffs. I'm not sure if I'm seeing it this year. I'll be perfectly honest. Colorado's done it in the past, and they they, they a lot of times end up on the bubble and can skate in there. Pardon the pun. But uh, I don't know. We'll wait and see on that one. I think they're an outside. Uh, number two, good, pretty good team. Number two, pretty good team is Calgary Flames. Um, number two in the division, 27-22 and eight record at 62 points. Ole Jokinen uh, leads the uh, Flames offense with 18 goals and uh, 30 assists, followed closely by, uh, 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 I always mess it up, uh, Ignila uh, with 22 goals and 24 assists and uh, 46 points. Uh, Kaprasov, uh, Respectable goaltender uh, with a 26-17-4 and four record and a 2.27 GAA. Uh, now, having said that they're off to a pretty good start and they look pretty good, uh, I think the Flames could sneak into the playoffs. I don't see them going real deep. Maybe the first round. That'll be it. Let's go over and take a look at the division leader. We'll take a quick look at the number one team in there. That's the uh, Sedin uh, Canucks. I mean the Vancouver Canucks. Let's yeah, get it yeah, straight. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let's get it straight. The Sedin brothers, uh, Henrik and uh, Daniel, they are the Canucks. I mean, seriously. Okay. Uh, both of them have accounted for 113 points for the team. 113. Yep. All right. Now, uh, both of them are uh, they're, they're helper guys. That's what they are. They're getting the assists. All right. Yeah. Henrik has uh, 12 goals. But 46 assists, they're passing it around. They're passing it around, and everybody else is getting the scoring for them. And he leads the league in assists. He, 46? I, 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 good knowledge on your part. I didn't even realize that. But he would have to with that many. Uh, brother Daniel, not, not shabby. 24 goals and another 31 assists right there. So these two guys are really out there gelling this team together. Strong team. Strong team and a scary team. They're backed up by one of the NHL's premier goaltenders in, in Roberto Luongo. 2.34 GAA. So long as those Sedin brothers, I'm telling you right now, so long as they keep cooking, this team 
they're going to go places. All right? You can see them going very, very deep into the playoffs. All right? That's our look at the Northwest Division, and we'll be taking a look at the Central Division next week. And I'm sure you'll be hot on that one. Uh, we've been getting a lot of uh, talk and chatter on our Facebook page uh, with regard to our Biggest Villain uh, segment. And we, we asked this week about uh, the Biggest Villain in uh, basketball. And uh, uh, we, had, we, we had some responses, and we, we quite a few actually. The uh, two biggest ones, most popular that came out of it, were, uh, were Kobe Bryant and King James, uh, LeBron James. Um, Kardashians didn't make it? Well, interestingly enough, I'm going to bring that up. Uh, according to a poll that was uh, done nationally, uh, just at the end of last uh, December, uh, just a, a month and a half ago, uh, they asked the very same question. Biggest, biggest uh, villain right now, right now in the NBA. Uh, it was not LeBron. Uh, it was Chris Humphries of, of the Nets. And a lot of that had to go to the whole Kardashian 45-day marriage thing. Uh, so apparently, right now, Humphreys is taking the heat for being the biggest. Jack wagon? Yeah, I, you know, I would have to say so. Uh, biggest villain uh, for for you, psychic in basketball? I'm going with LeBron James. LeBron James. Yes. I mean, come on, the guy. You know, an hour special nah, to I announce know. where he's going. Yeah, I know, I the know. whole fancy ceremony with him. You know. Wade and Bosch down there in Miami, yeah. where they come out touting. No yep. titles. Yep, yep. I, they did do that Big last ego. year. That's right, that's right. Uh, I've gone back and forth on it all week long. Um, and my original thought was that, and I was very tempted to, uh, to give it to John Calipari, the uh, current coach of the uh, of Kentucky there in the NCAA, former coach of, the, of UMass. Uh, so I, I'll give Calipari my honorable mention. Ultimately, I had to go with Dennis Rodman. Uh, watching Dennis Rodman over those years, uh, and, and really what, I guess, irritated and aggravated me the most and really puts him up there as my, as my villain. His annex, you know, his, his, uh, his rough, nasty play at times uh, on the court, his off-court ridiculousness, uh, scuffles he got into, his relationship with the media. I mean, all of these things, as a fan, just do not endear you and did not endear me. I mean, forget the fact that he had to color his hair a different color every week and then sometimes dressed up as a woman. Uh, you know, th these are just not things that, well, men in the frat house would, would, en would enjoy. No, no, absolutely not. So, uh, I put Dennis Rodman up there as my villain in basketball. He had a beautiful hair. Uh, no, he didn't, actually, but that's okay. Uh, okay, next week we're going to be taking a look at the biggest villain in, well in honor of the fact Daytona kicks up at NASCAR season. Hey, who's your biggest villain in motorsports in NASCAR? Tell us. Hit us up on Facebook this week, all right? Check us out. Hit us up. Let us know. We'll mention your comments on the air, all right? All right, there it is for the middle of February. Keep it yep. real. Keep it live. Keep it going. Tied at 87. Lynn with the ball in his hands. Fans on their feet. Four, win for the win!